This is the Intense Sniper T. And essentially, it's the most fun you can have on two wheels in the woods, at least in my humble opinion, and which I'll try and demonstrate over the next few minutes in this review. So we have a full carbon fiber 29er, big wheels for rolling ability and speed, a carbon frame, swing arm, and even the suspension rocket linkage is made from carbon fiber to keep the weight as low as possible. And available in two versions. There's the XE version and this, the trail version. And this gets 120 mil travel, front and rear, a dropper seat post, wider handlebar, and bigger rubber compared to the XE version, which has travel limited to 100 front and rear, no dropper post, and it's a bit lighter overall. So two bikes from one sort of platform, but I think the trail version is the one that I can get really excited about. Now, here in the UK, Intense is now selling direct to consumers, so it can be a bit more aggressive on the price and offer better value for money than before. Now, the range starts at £3,900 and tops out at £6,300 with a frame set option for £2,600. And it's worth adding, there's no hidden costs in that price either. Shipping costs, taxes, surcharges, any of that stuff, the price is what you actually pay. On the trail, they're biking wicked fast. It's ruthless, accurate, and yet a bit cheesy, but it does live up to its sniper name. Through corners, it holds lines really well. There's no sense of flex on the frame, despite its low weight, really tracks with accuracy and confidence. And on the uh, chunkier trails, I'm definitely glad of the extra travel, the dropper seat posts, the wider handlebars, the bigger brakes, and the chunky tires over the XE version of this same platform. Definitely gives you loads of capability on the way down on those fun trails where you really like to push your limits. It's got that pinpoint accuracy. I love a short travel bike like this. Plenty of stiffness from the frame despite its low weight. Really good suspension travel. It's firm, composed, doesn't wallow, doesn't feel mushy. Moves when it needs to. Not the lightest bike in the world. There are lighter bills available if you've got more money and deep pockets. But even with the weight, which let me reiterate, it's not heavy, it still rides uphill really well. Geometry and a suspension just works so well together. You can nip and tuck around the trees, put it right where you want it. A few pedal strokes, you can back up the speed, whammo, so quick. But there's definitely no getting away from the fact that it's a jacked up, boosted up XE bike with a bit more travel. Some of these down country bikes, as people like to call them, can feel like you have more travel than you actually do. But that's not really the case here. It feels like you have 120 mil travel. That's not a criticism though, just a reflection of how the bike rides. But the suspension travel, it delivers smoothly. Plenty of uh, ramp up when you really push it hard into the corners and off drops. Something else this bike does extremely well is make even flatter, mellow trails like these a lot of fun. Partly because you're going so damn fast, but also just because it corners well, it tracks well, you've got an efficient pedaling platform, carry speed well thanks to big tyres and wheels. So even when you're connecting your favourite descent, as I am right now, you're still having a blast, still getting ahead of the workout. I'm still grinning for me to do it. Where bigger, heavier bikes can be a bit more sluggish in my experience on these sort of trails. A bit more effort to keep them up to speed. Where this bike, a few pedal strokes out of the corners, whammo, back up to speed. Down brakes in the corner, lean it over, outside foot down. Ah, oh, so good. Ah, oh, it holds this line through the corners. Ah, oh, so well. And then we come to climbing. And my goodness, is this bike good and very adept at climbing. That low weight helps the course, very efficient suspension. You can firm up, lock it out if you need on the road, or just leave it in the trail setting for most climbing applications. And it just scampers up climbs. Loads of grip and traction on looser, scrabbly surfaces. Now, I can definitely see this being a fantastic race bike. I mean, the trail version isn't as racy as the XE version, but for racing, or well, casual racing, be fine. And definitely for marathon racing, something like Cape Epic, oh, that bike would be amazing. With extra travel, bigger tyres and stuff, 
give you more headroom for encountering trails you might not have run before. There's definitely a bike you could do some big, big rides on. And the reason I love short trail trail bikes is because you don't need a gnarly trail to really have a good sensation on the bike. Bigger bikes, you need bigger trails and bigger speed and bigger consequences. But short trail bikes keep it fun, still plenty of fast enough. Just a real Goldilocks bike for me. They're so dusty down here. Blown out. Whoa! Oh, my brakes on. Try not to lock the wheels up, but they're locking up. Get so dusty. I think an inch of dust, which is unheard of. So, generally, the Sniper T has really impressed, but there are some concerns and issues. The biggest of which is because the bike has been around since 2018. The geometry looks like it needs an update to bring it into line with where rival bikes are. Both the newer Transition Spur and Canyon Spectrum 125, two bikes with similar travel and riding intentions, feature a much longer reach, slacker head angle and steeper seat tube angle than the Sniper T. And while it's clearly great the bike has a dropper seat post, I mean personally I can't ride without one on a mountain bike these days, there is an issue around this one. So a size large frame, I'm 181 centimeters tall with average length legs for my height. And the dropper seat post is a nice generous 170, all good. But I have the seat post as low as it goes and I'm right on the limit. If a dropper seat post is any longer or that seat tube any taller, it'd be too tall for me. I wouldn't be able to ride a bike. So personally, a short seat tube would be a good move on a bike. It'd give you more option to go down on the saddle height if you need, if you don't have long legs as like me or you want to run a longer dropper seat post, a 180 or even a 200 as some bikes are coming with. So that's a small issue and definitely worth checking very closely if you are the same height as me and looking at a size large that you can actually fit on the bike uh, with a saddle at full extension. The build kit on this bike has been solid and not giving me any cause for concern during my time riding it. We have a SRAM Eagle NX group set, so not the lightest in the world, but gives you massive range from a huge cassette and definitely helps on some of the steeper climbs. And then for stopping duties, we have TRP Slate 4 pot brakes, which I've not used before, but I've been really impressed. Nice lever blade, nice shape, nice modulation, plenty of power from the 4 pot caliper design, and plenty of reach adjustment from the big dial on the inside as well. So while Shimano and SRAM are much more popular in the braking department, these have been really impressive and definitely worth considering if you're in the market for something a little bit different. Suspension has been carried out by a Fox 34 up front, and the float rear shock. The 34 is a fantastic fork, a bit more stiffness and a bit more travel from a shorter travel, lighter weight option, like a 32 perhaps. Really matches the bike and the capabilities of this bike really well. The suspension on this bike is a dual linkage design with two short rotating links, which the company calls a JS Tune. And it works well, providing a nice, efficient and stable pedaling platform while it's being smooth and controlled throughout the travel. The Fox Shock has a three-way lever for adjusting it from closed to fully open and trail mode. I most of the time rode it in the open setting on the descent and then the trail mode on all the flat pedaling stuff and I use the lockout for road climbs. But you can leave it in full open, it's well controlled enough, but I did make use of it quite a bit. The only downside of using it quite a bit is it's quite low in the frame, so quite a stretch uh, to flick that lever. Maybe a handlebar remote would be a good thing, but I'm usually against having more levers and clutter on the handlebar. I love the simplicity of the dial on the top. Open, firm, anything in between, really simple. And while it's all very well having lots of dials and knobs to twiddle on your suspension fork, sometimes it's nice to get on your bike, just flick it to open or firm and hit the trails and not worry about that. Most of the time I had it in the open setting and it worked well for the riding I do and my body weight. I've had a huge amount of fun riding and reviewing the Intense Sniper T over the last few months. And definitely a bike for a person who wants a fast, lightweight, efficient pedaling bike for far trails. It definitely feels more like a boosted, jacked up XC race bike than a bigger, longer travel bike, like a Canyon Spectra 125, which has similar travel, but that definitely feels like a bigger, gnarlier bike. This feels lighter, faster, uh, more agile, more responsive, and definitely 
a bike for the rider who values speed on all terrain, and it isn't just about getting to the top and then plummeting down. The value of money is probably not the best in the world, but it's definitely better now they are selling direct. Uh, I'll put a link to their website down below so you can check them out. Um, but there's more to a bike's value than just the components you get on it as well. Intense has lots of pedigree, lots of heritage as well, and it's a very capable bike that definitely delivers well above the specification would suggest. Anyway, let me know what you think of the bike by anyway, let me know what you think of this bike by leaving a comment down below. And if you want to see a review of some other mountain bikes on the channel, then check the playlist right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button down here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.